Yes, we can see that. Oh, thank you. Thank you for telling me. All right. Okay, so, oh, so obviously I work at the University of Essex and uh, we use Moodle and we used multiple choice questions uh, for as long as I can remember uh, to test definitions such as uh, the definition of a limit. And right now, how do I or that? And uh, about 10 years ago, we developed a new question type in Moodle uh, pre because preparing such questions manually or using the standard interface in Moodle is not convenient at all. And suppose that each week you want to create between five and 10 questions for a formative test, for example, in your analysis module. And uh, then you want to do it quickly bet in between five and 15 minutes. And this is why we wrote a new plugin for, Mo uh, for Moodle, a new question type. And we called it Blackwater. Uh, so uh, if you ever talk to somebody from our university about that, we know it as Blackwater and it is called after a river in Essex. Uh, so uh, suppose you want to test a fragment of your lecture notes. It might be a definition. Here I give an example of a formula uh, written in LaTeX. It does not have to be a formula. It can be something with words. It can be something without mathematical notation. It does not matter. Uh, the principle how Blackwater works will be exactly the same. So uh, the idea is that if you have a certain fragment in your later lecture notes, you should be able just to copy and paste it into Moodle. And then it would be almost a uh, to use question. I'll show you how it works. Uh, right, so what we did about 20 years ago, we would look at a certain definition in analysis and we would change something in it. I don't know if you can see my mouse cursor, but here we have changed quantas, quant sorry, quantifiers. And let me show you another example. And here, for example, we swapped greater for less and less for greater. So we can have these two possible types of destructors and also we can combine them as well to make it more difficult for the student. And this is how our typical formative tests every week would look about 15 years ago. So obviously we would ask which one of these four definitions is correct. Now you imagine we had to prepare that by hand in LaTeX, which took some time. And after that we had to mark it by hand, which again takes some time. And there is no reason at all to mark multiple choice tests uh, by hand. So this is why we developed uh, a new Moodle question type, which would make these changes more or less automatically and also permute the order of options at random. So every student will guess, sorry, we will get the options in each question at random. And also what was the guiding principles of what we did is that we're not making random changes in a definition uh, we are making changes in some parts which actually influence the logic of this definition, like changing quantifiers or changing less to greater. So these changes are small and they are not all over the place. They are in some uh, carefully chosen places. Uh, obviously, when you choose which parts to change, this is not a random choice. Uh, this reflects your understanding of a lecturer as to what kind of things student might find confusing. And this is why your distractors intentionally concentrate on these parts of the definition. So 
here in particular, what we're thinking about, each quantifier can be replaced by the opposite quantifier. This is uh, what you can think of as change of type one. And then each inequality can be replaced by the opposite inequality. And this is what you can uh, think of change of type two. After that, what you do, you take your definition from your LaTeX lecture notes, you copy and paste it into Moodle, you indicate that you want to use this kind of change and this kind of change. And after that, you have a working question, which obviously will be self-marked in Moodle. Uh, we also use these questions for uh, summative tests in the middle of the term and the end of the term. Uh, but the primary uh, purpose was to create many questions so that every week students will encounter some questions in formative tests. And obviously because it is Moodle, then it means that after each question, not only you see their marks, but you can see who attempted which test and who didn't. And then you can contact those students who didn't and ask what was it that they did not understand and why they did not attempt. So, oh, how do you create a question in Blackwater? You concentrate on what types of change you want to apply and in what parts of the definition. And after that, you just indicate in these parts using a special notation, what you want to replace by what. So let me show you a couple of examples. Uh, for example, two add two is equal to four. So let us check if a student really knows that two add two is equal to four or some other number. And then you would copy and paste this fragment of your lecture notes to add two equal four into Moodle. And after that, you would add distractors. Now, uh, here, what I indicate is that the answer can be one or two or three or four or five. Now, I must say that in this particular question, I was writing it early in the morning and I did not quite write it correctly. There, we, there is a misprint on it. The first answer in Blackwater should be the correct answer. So this uh, entry should be four. And after that, we should have distractors such as one, two, three, five. So what happens here? It is the first type of change. So this is why here we have comma, comma, one. Then we have several options separated by double commas. And then the list of options ends with comma, comma, full stop. And as a result, when you get a question in Moodle, what will happen? It will choose the correct option and it will choose some incorrect options to make four different answer options in total. It will shuffle them in a random order and it will show them in a question. So th this is how this question will look. Now let us look at another question, which is slightly more interesting. Uh, so x minus y squared is equal to x squared plus y squared minus 2xy. Suppose this is a fragment of your lecture notes. And suppose you want to test how students understand it. So obviously you have some tools here in the answer. Uh, you have the coefficient 2 in front of xy, but not in front of x squared and not in front of y squared. So the, the first type of change that we can think of is ask the student whether two should be in front of x, y, or in front of x squared and y squared. And then we have one minus here. And this minus e is in front of two x, y, but maybe it should be in front of y because, but, so the second change uh, will be to put minus either in front of y squared or in front of minus 2xy as it should be. 
So this is how you should change this LaTeX code. So you copy this LaTeX code from your lecture notes into Moodle and add destructors in this way. So in front of x squared, we should not have uh, any coefficient or an incorrect option is to have a coefficient two. Likewise, in front of y squared, the correct option is not to have a coefficient or a destructor is to have again a coefficient two. In front of x, y, the correct option is to have coefficient two and an incorrect option, a destructor, is not to have a coefficient. And likewise, regarding pluses and minuses, this will be a change of type two. Uh, the correct option in front of y squared is to have plus and an incorrect option is to have minus. Uh, now in front of two x, y, the correct option is to have minus and the incorrect option is to have plus. So now if you just copy and paste this code into Moodle and show what your question shows, the, the, there it is. So these are the possible answer options produced according to the rules which we have written. As you can see, uh, a number of subtle changes are made to the formula and it is not easy to see immediately which one is the correct one. Obviously one of them is the correct one, but uh, it will take a minute or two for a student to find out which one is the correct one. So this is how it works. There is also some other functionality in Blackwater, but we never really used it. Uh, we stick to this one. Uh, so we add several types of possible changes. We indicate in small fragments of the definition how the destructors are created. Uh, and as you can see, they can be uh, interdependent. Uh, so the change in one part of the formula is reflected by a change in another part of the formula. And in this way, in one or two minutes, you can create a nice versatile uh, multiple choice question like this one. So uh, this is what I wanted to show you today. And if you have any questions, please ask me. Thank you very much, uh, Alexei, um, for uh, quite a short talk. Um, I'm not sure we have, uh, we have one question, uh, again from Martin Greenhow, uh, about this talk. Um, he says, uh, given that the epsilon delta definition is gibberish to many students, the sorts of changes made are still feasible. Um, the twiddling, the change of quantifiers and signs. Um, however, your algorithmic approach may not work in other contexts where those distractors might be unfeasible at a glance. Um, so what I was going to ask something similar about this. So what's, what's the pedagogical benefit of these kinds of questions where um, when a student picks the wrong answer, what, what do you learn from that? All oh, right. Right. Yes. Yes. We had to think about that. It is perfectly possible to write some automated feedback for this, but we skipped that uh, because the idea was that there can be only generic feedback in the particular implementation that we wrote, the generic feedback can be like, read this chapter of your lecture notes in case uh, the answer is incorrect. Uh, but what we do, we encourage the students to come back to us whenever they receive an incorrect answer. So what they do, either they reproduce this incorrect answer in front of us and ask what happens, or they take a screenshot and send it to us and ask to explain to them. Uh, so this is how we work with them. Uh, uh, as I'm saying, uh, this is a tool which, is, which works best when you repeat it frequently. And this way, those students who engage have a chance to understand that they don't understand something within the same week, rather than waiting till some larger assessment, which happens perhaps in four weeks time. Okay. I don't know if it answers your question. 
Uh, it does a bit, yeah. Um, I think maybe it answers Martin's part of the question. Um, so uh, the, the way I normally operate when writing a multiple choice question is that each distractor should have a certain error behind it that I'm expecting a student to make. Yes. Um, so if the student picks that wrong answer, you can give some feedback saying you probably made this mistake. Is that something oh. you can do? In our implementation, no, we did not do anything like that. We, 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 did, we did not write any form of feedback apart from very generic feedback. Right. Uh, because again, we thought we can easily produce many destructors, which will mm -hmm. produce many different possible errors, which hopefully students will make and this is how they will come back to us and ask us about what was wrong in my answer. Okay. Uh, but no, we did not expect the computer to actively teach them. Right, okay. Um, we have a question uh, from Sally Barton. Just wanted to know um, if, if we want to use Blackwater in our Moodle installation, what do we do? So is it uh, open source? Is it available? Uh, yes, yes, it's just a PHP code. So, uh, so definitely we, we can share it. Okay. Um, right, well, oh, one more question. They're still coming in. Um, oh, James Foley asking basically the same thing. Uh, um, so it's, it's a Moodle plugin that um, will be possible to install. Into Moodle. Uh, yes, it is a straightforward question type. So it, it installs itself when, when you work with Moodle, you, you see it just as one more question type. Lovely. Great. Um, well, thank you, Alexei. Um...